All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is an AOI instruction, an add-on instruction that I've made for, to work with a PID. And what this is gonna do, if you've seen the older logics, it used a pulse with modulization, right? So you had that option. Well, in control logics, you no longer have that option. So what we've done is we've added our own custom uh, pulse with modulization AOI, right? So this is to work in conjunction with a PID for like pulse heating. So if you have a heating system that has like a bunch of heaters and you need them to come on and off, like say for instance, like a, like you just wanna send the control or send power to them for a longer period of time to give it more heating or a less period of time to give it less heating as in control it that way, right? So instead of doing that, uh, you know, we're gonna show this as a simulated, you know, coding right here that we have for our PID. And then we're gonna show this being used. So right now it's controlling within tolerance right you see this I have the the bits you can use on the outside these are the the basically the output bits that you can use for that and then we have active heating um, for rapid medium low heating and then minimal heating and then as soon as it's within tolerance like it is right now the, obviously the pulse this would be your output going out to your actual heaters would cut, cut off now there's a, a couple key things in here that we built into this this uh, AOI is you can use this off of the PID's error or you can use it off the PID's output, right? So either one you want to actually use, you can use it off of it. You just have to change this tag right here. So um, to look at that, and we'll, we'll look at the way this logic is done in just a second, but I want to show you this working. So I have the simulation logic set up so that it will basically put the PID in manual mode and then basically throw it completely out. Right, so what I mean by that is it will go ahead and shoot up the error, right? You see the process variable moving. It's basically a simulation timer that we have right here that we're computing everything with. So uh, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a, a high error, right? You see this error moving right now? So that's the error of the PID not reaching its tolerance, right? So the system is actually trying to control a rapid heating right now to get it back into tolerance, right? But we don't have the PID working in auto, so let's throw the PID back in auto. Okay, so now what we're going to see is the PID is going to start controlling down, right? It's going to start controlling down. And as soon as it gets within our tolerances, it's going to change which heating mode it actually uses. So you see it changed from rapid to medium right there. And now it's going to change down to low heating. And then as soon as it gets within that tolerances, then you can come in and it'll start changing from there. Now the good side to all of this is you can change your heating timing right here. So you can change your range that you're operating from. You have your ranges that you can change. You have your, your rapid heating timing, how long your, your, time, your, your pulse is gonna stay on. You're gonna have, you know, for each one of these, right? Rapid heating, medium heating, low heating, minimal heating. And then again, this is all variables that you can change. So how does this work? Right, so we're gonna actually look at that logic. We're gonna open up the logic. Again, uh, this is a, uh, a new operation just to indicate whether you're using the PID in an error mode or like monitoring the error. So you're using the pulse width modulization to actually you know, utilize the error position to trigger what's going to happen or, or you're using the output, right? So that would be actually working in reverse from one another. But so this is basically the logic that we have. And again, you can see we're working within the tolerances right now, right? So this is basically the pulse width right here coming out. That's the pulse that we're giving the timer, right? So that's the, the pulse that we're actually shooting out. You can see that right here. This is the pulse output. That's the pulse output right here that we're shooting out. And again, it's within tolerance. So you don't see it actually indexing right now. But again, so let's actually throw this out of tolerance and show you this working and and full, you know, full fledged, right? So, all right, so let's throw it back out. Let's get it out of auto. Let's kind of, and and again, this is just a simulation PID. This is not a PID tied to an auxiliary thing in the real world. So, um, for that matter, we're just going to go ahead and put it in manual mode to simulate the loop being out of control, right? Or maybe you're just starting up. Or maybe the system is just, you know, starting up from a, a down or something that the machine was down, right? So the process variable, we're trying to get to the set point of 500 and the process variable right now 
is obviously way off of set point. So all we're doing is simulating the process variable right here. So right now the process variable is 100. So let's look at the logic. So let's see what the logic's doing. So see the PID element, you can see it coming in. It's going to be rapid heating, right? That's what we're using. It's going to be rapid heating. Now it's in medium heating because it's within that tolerances right here, which is 100 to 250. Then it's going to come down to low heating as soon as it gets between 50 and 100, right? And then it's going to come down to the next set point, which is going to be between 25 and 50, which is going to be the minimal heating that we have, right? So that's going to be minimal heating. And then as soon as it gets below and gets below that, gets gets within our tolerance range, wherever that tolerance range we set is, it's going to stop pulsing all together. Okay. So there's, there's a, a really, really uh, beneficial use to all of, of, you know, this system. If working in natural capacity, right, if you wouldn't see it naturally going this fast. But in the simulation process that we're showing right now, you're seeing it operating really, really, really fast. So right now the PID loop is, is again, it's right within the, uh, you know, that, that two that we're using, right, that uh, basically the heating. So if we looked up here, you could see that would be 500 is the, the set point. The process variable is 500 and, you know, some decimals after. So it's pretty close. And the output, again, is roughly around 24. So this is tuned basically this is basically the, the setup of a PID I've shown how to tune these in prior videos but again when it comes down to it this is about the pulse width modulization so using a pulse to actually control a heater right say, say for instance you had a heater and it was just like a heater element inside of a machine you were heating something up like a glue unit or you were heating something up like uh, just some product or something that you needed to be heated up with just some some just normal el heating elements right then you would need something to pulse right so that's exactly where this comes in place so again um, this is how you use it this is basically the first version when we came out and, and did this now we can uh, we can put this in many different versions right we can actually use this in uh, we'll, we'll actually come in and, and add another routine and this routine will have a uh, function block and we'll just say pulse with modulation and then we'll throw it in here and let's grab it and see so we don't we haven't built it for this over here but you know as far as this goes we're not editing either so we can use this in the actual uh, function block routine as well and you see this is this it actually looks a lot better when it comes to that because you can actually see the things broken down even more than so than they're broken down in the ladder logic version but I just wanted to show that in a couple different ways that you can use this. And again, we'll cancel this because we don't want to have that. We're not actually going to to utilize this. But when it comes down to it, you know, I, I wanted to in a, you know kind of introduce it, kind of show you some things that you know you know you can build these things on your own, right? So I built this off a of logic that I had before, and all I did was basically make this AOI. And when I made the AOI, I came down and we started utilizing the bits over here. It's really, really a simple process. So, um, if you wanted to know more about how to do that, you know, I have a, you know a full breakdown of, you know, how to create your own AOIs, how to actually go through and and you know troubleshoot other people's AOIs and go through and understand how the process works, how to build them. Again, when you come down here and look at the logic, you look at the parameters part of it. You can break down and open up and look at your your diff, you know your different things you have for properties. You know your parameters your local tags your scan modes your signature all this stuff right so again when it comes down to it you can see all that stuff so uh, again I, I just wanted to actually introduce this and show another use of an AOI so this would be a pulse with modulization right so a pulse control for a heater used with a PID loop so this is this is a great implementation for something that again you just you're trying to heat something up with a raw element you or with it just an element or something like that you don't have any kind of steam control or something this would be the the, the best properties to go about it right or you can you know use standard relay logic or something like that if you wanted to but again you still need a, a way to control it right this is a, a PLC way a way to do it in control logics that you no longer need something like an auxiliary you know 
thing that you buy from like a like a Red Lion or something like a you know like a different uh, module you would have on the outside of a panel it would be separate from the PLC a lot harder to configure a lot you know you have to read up on it and everything this is something you can control inside of your PLC and have it within your control whenever you want to so hopefully you enjoyed that video and we'll see you guys on the next one